We've covered many strange and unexplained things which can be found within Egypt. Home to undoubtedly one of the most perplexing structures on the face of the planet, it is a place which also displays erosion from an as yet untold history. Evidence of a far greater antiquity and obviously its many unexplainable creations. Yet there are still many amazing areas of this once flourishing civilization's home which are yet to be told. One such site which is currently being unraveled is the once lost, submerged city of Heracleion. Also known as Thonis, it was a place long thought to have been mythical. A city of extraordinary wealth, mentioned by Herodotus, visited by Helen of Troy and Paris, her lover but according to legend mysteriously buried under the sea. Recent discoveries have in fact confirmed that Heracleion was true, not only that it existed, actually know where it is. Successfully uncovering many of its treasures, archaeologists have been able to produce a picture of what life was like in this city in the era of its existence. Although it was long attested as mythical, upon its amazing discovery, the same academia immediately put forward a dating for its apparent submersion, stating beyond doubt that the city disappeared beneath the Mediterranean waves around 1200 years ago. So far, they have discovered the remains of more than 64 ships, lots of gold coins, giant 16-foot statues uncovered and brought to the surface, with hundreds of smaller statues of minor gods being found on the seafloor. Slabs of stone inscribed in ancient Egyptian have also been brought to the surface. Dozens of small limestone sarcophagi were also recently uncovered by divers and are believed to have once contained mummified animals put there to appease the gods. Dr. Damian Robinson, director of the Oxford Center for Maritime Archaeology at the University of Oxford, who is part of the team working on the site, said, quote, It is a major city we are excavating. The site has amazing preservation. We are now starting to look at some of the more interesting areas within it to try to understand life there. We are getting a rich picture of things like the trade that was going on there and the nature of the maritime economy in the Egyptian late period. There were things coming in from Greece and the Phoenicians." End quote. Another string to a once amazing civilization's bow. We will keep you posted regarding any perplexing finds. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. There are many unexplained ruins which can be found within Egypt. Who built the Great Pyramids? What was the true identity and purpose for the Great Sphinx? Countless mysteries still swirl around these enormous structures. And no matter how much academic study is pursued within this mystical place, an answer for how, and indeed why these monstrous feats were undertaken, remains unanswered. The reason for this gap in our understanding, we have come to hypothesize, is due to a paradigm of understanding, the result of which being that we as a species can only recollect a fraction of our history. A case of global amnesia has beset our kind, and unless those with the ability to see through the fog of established and as such heavily researched areas of our history we may never solve the most important question of all. Where do we come from? The reason for our growing, staunch belief in a lost history is only further compounded by the subjects we research, and indeed the seemingly impossible and as yet unanswered methods that an ancient, clearly once highly capable civilization utilized to achieve such remarkable feats of ancient engineering and our next item of choice is of no exception. As mentioned, there exists a heavily researched and indeed unraveled history, which can be archaeologically found amongst these truly impressive ruins. However, although we are led to believe that academia has a handle on the ancient lives of those who dwelled within these structures, there are many areas which tell a different story, and one must question why. Why is there such gaps of explanation, when we are told that much of what these groups undertook has been researched and understood since the time of Edward Carter? Why was the Valley of the Kings lost? Who, and indeed how, were the ancient pyramids constructed? Many of the things we are now under the presumption have been fully explored are merely rediscoveries completely absent from the ream of writing and hieroglyphics later deciphered and read. 
the submerged city of Heraculon, for example, an entire ancient city which not only clearly dates from the time of the pyramids, but was also submerged in an event we are yet to be informed of. The rediscovery of this site in recent times is yet another example that the attitudes of those who are granted access to such sites is misplaced, and what we thought we knew about the true creators of said sites is a red herring, a smokescreen, placed down by later, surviving, and due to these unknown events, proven by heavy research, far less capable, far more primitive a civilization, who merely re-inhabited such sites, allowing them to develop to a point where they were not only able to leave their own archaeological legacy amongst these ruins, but also to claim such intimidating works as their own. Such a reality, such a claimed illusion, would also have made them a perceived force to be reckoned with, an opportunistic strategy that any critical thinking leader would have leapt at to not only preserve one's power, but to ensure the ongoing existence of their own kind. This posited scenario would also explain why the ancient city of Heraculon, and indeed the Sphinx, the Great Pyramids, the Colossus of Memnon, the unfinished obelisk, and so forth, remained undescribed within what is claimed as the Builder's writings, and why such incredible feats were seemingly silently undertaken. Any explanation as to how these sites were built, such as that of Baalbek over a thousand miles away, possessed Aswan granite columns many tons in weight, remains a mystery. For one can claim such works as their own, but an explanation as to how they achieved them would not be something they could provide. Who built the ancient city of Heraculon, indeed the entire plateau of Giza? Why is the city submerged underwater, and what happened to those who constructed such sites? It is a pursuit for answers which we find highly compelling. Although often disagreeing with academic explanations regarding the origin and past constructor of many of the world's as yet unexplained ruins, some have become so old, the field of geology can often become an ally to these deliberate misconceptions. Supporting the premise based around permitted timelines, events already dated and published, disguised assumptions as to the timeline for the development and chronological dating for Homo sapiens' initial globetrotting, with a timeline for their travels across Earth supposedly already established. Additionally, as the ruins contradictory to this timeline of events age and slowly erode away to the point of near unidentifiability, this predictably allows these same geologists to merely dismiss such artifacts as natural formations. However, Sometimes, ruins will turn up in locations that have already been explored, dated, and explained by these same fields. This accurate study of terrain shift, completed by scholars prior to the discovery of ancient ruins, later discovered to be resting, hidden within these particular places. Submerged ruins that geology had already established a timeline for when these areas in question were originally flooded. As such, when ancient ruins are found to be submerged in these locations, instead of remaining an ally for the currently attested timeline of events, have already condemned themselves through their accurate dating of the rise in water levels, thus instead become unwitting advocates for the fact that not only do these ruins undeniably outdate the current attested chronology of the development of civilization, but prove beyond doubt that past, now lost civilizations did indeed once exist, with many of these advanced cultures, just as biblical and Atlantean legends have long suggested, sunk into the sea during a great flood, only rediscovered with the use of penetrative radar systems attached to modern satellites. We have, in the past, covered the ancient ruins found off the coast of Cuba, also submerged under ancient waters which includes a compelling pyramid complex. Also, the Bimini Road, which although clearly of an artificial nature, has to be dismissed by the modern academic world, clearly due to the vast amount of time that such ruins have been submerged. With many of these sites, 
according to geological studies done upon local sea levels, also before said discoveries were exposed, dating them to a minimum of 12,000 years of age. These discoveries have not just been made within the oceans of Earth. Thanks to this same technology, a mega-metropolis has also been found under the dense jungles of Guatemala. This discovery, although not sharing the same undeniable data for its age, supported by geological study, is of such an unimaginably enormous size revealed to contain such advanced architectural planning that it and many other similar sites have forced many fields of historical study to re-evaluate their understandings of past populations, of what we strongly believe are, in fact, remnants of a now lost, yet once highly successful, prosperous ancient civilization. And our subject for this video was found by the most unlikely of individuals, a skipper of a trawler scanning the seabed with sonar off the coast of Azores, was stunned when he peered at his readout screen and was met by the outline of a near-pristine ancient pyramid. After sharing his discovery with the mainstream media, certain individuals with penetrative satellite radar systems were equally astonished to discover that this ancient now-submerged pyramid, just like Guatemala, is but a single piece of yet another megametropolis that was hidden until now, that according to previous geological studies of the sea levels around the Spanish coast, has been dated at a minimum of 100,000 years old, overwhelming evidence to support not only the channel's continued posit of hidden highly ancient once highly advanced lost civilization, but that modern academia continued to be funded to ignore them going to great lengths to conceal such discoveries, although exploration is currently at its early stages. We will, of course, keep you posted. It is undoubtedly highly compelling.
Antarctica, one of the world's most mysterious continents, home to one of the largest and driest deserts on the planet, covering an area of around 5.5 million square miles. If there was anywhere on Earth where crashed, preserved, ancient alien technologies could still be found, it would be here. An untouched landscape, which may in all possibility be the final resting place as of yet unretrieved relics, which may have been stranded there to this day. The deep sea which surrounds Antarctica, for example, are some of the most difficult and inhospitable environments to explore anywhere. Far away from the modern world, deep within the frigid, pitch-black waters of this massive chunk of ice, where our next discovery was miraculously made. An out-of-place artifact, which is still resting at the bottom of this sea. Known as the Eltanen Antenna, if it wasn't for the brute strength of the nearly 2,000-ton ice-breaking vessel known as the Eltanen, we may never have found it. Initially a U.S. Navy cargo-carrying icebreaker, in 1962, she was reclassified as an oceanographic research ship and became the world's first dedicated Antarctic research vessel. On the 29th of August, 1964, while collecting sample cores and photographing the seabed west of Cape Horn, the Altanen took the first known photograph of the antenna at a depth of nearly 4,000 meters. The first public mention of the unusual object would not surface for several months. A news item, which appeared in the New Zealand Herald on 5 December 1964, under the heading, Puzzle Picture from the Seabed, would briefly disclose the discovery, yet any further exploratory missions, if indeed there has been any, have been operating in secret. Similar to the Baltic Sea anomaly, yet positioned at a far deeper depth, in an extremely remote, cold, and lonely part of our world, it too shows all the hallmarks of an artificially created object. The question is, what could it be? And more importantly, what was or is its function? In 1968, author Brad Steiger wrote an article for Saga magazine in which he claimed that the Altanen had in fact photographed, quote, an astonishing piece of machinery very much like the cross between a TV antenna and a telemetry antenna." End quote. It is interesting to note that the Black Knight satellite, an anomalous object which is in a polar orbit, has been declared by numerous investigators throughout history as an artificial alien satellite, and with what appears to be an enormous alien antenna resting on the Antarctic seafloor. Is it possible that the two are connected? Or possibly, in communication with each other. In 2003, Tom DeMary, a researcher in underwater acoustics, contacted oceanographer A.F. Amos, a member of the Altanen's crew in the 1960s, in an effort to debunk any theory involving artificial design. In turn, Amos referred DeMary to the 1971 book The Face of the Deep by Bruce C. Heason and Charles D. Hollister. It seems Hollister had already attempted to identify the mysterious object as a carnivorous sea sponge. However, these attempts to discredit any unusual hypothesis was solely based on the same photographs we are privileged to. Further photographic exploration of the object, if undertaken, has been done in complete isolation from the public. What is the Altanen antenna? A mere sea sponge? An actual alien antenna? Whatever it is, it seems certain fields of study would like you to believe it's natural. Regardless of whether confirmation of such claims was made, we always find this highly compelling. Lake Titicaca This familiar named lake is located deep within the Andes, now sliced in two by the borders of Bolivia and Peru. It is not only the largest lake in South America, but it is also undoubtedly the most important historically that can be found anywhere on Earth. Many tales have surfaced over the years involving submerged citadels, mountains of gold relics, and vast ancient ruins scattered across the lake bed. Stories of amateur archaeologists becoming very wealthy from astonishing yet not publicly disclosed discoveries which lay beneath the waves. We found 2,000 objects and fragments, declared Christophe Delarere 
a Belgian archaeologist at a ceremony in La Paz. According to Christoph, divers from his team found the objects more than 7 meters underwater off the coast of the Island of the Sun. These included 31 large golden relics. Archaeologists think these discoveries are just the beginning of something far greater, and for good reason. As time goes on, claims made a long time ago begin to appear more and more likely. According to Colonel John Blashford Snells, a notorious explorer, his extensive explorations of the lake, the surrounding ancient culture, and his resulting research, the ancient city of Tiwanaku, very near the lake shores, copied their original building knowledge from the scientists of the mysterious and legendary lost city of Atlantis. Interestingly, ancient Incan legend also corroborates his conclusions, stating that the mythical founders of their amazing empire did indeed once emerge from the lake's waters. The lake was considered the center of the cosmos by the Incan people, and they also somehow knew its shape, something we have only been able to achieve from a very high altitude. Ancient Inca legends tell that after a great flood, the creator god Viracocha emerged from Lake Titicaca. It stated that he created, though this more than likely means they believe he restored the sun, moon, and stars. Viracocha was fair-skinned and long beard. He brought a great culture to the ancient peoples of South America. The 16th century Spanish chronicler Pedro Sarmiento de Gamboa recorded in his Historica de los Incas a tale about Manco Capac, the first Inca. According to Inca mythology, the Inca are the direct descendants of a mythical first Inca, named Manco Capac, who emerged from one of the three openings in the mountain Tambotoco, located 33 kilometers to the south of Cusco, Peru. Manco Capac is said to have created the Incan civilization through Varacocha. Even though his figure is mentioned in several chronicles, his actual existence remains unclear. Could this original and possibly vast ancient culture still be resting upon the bottom of Lake Titicaca? Did something catastrophic occur in our very distant past which filled this lake, once a large fertile valley, filled with what we have all become familiar as the lost city of Atlantis? On the 30th of July 1967, a group of seven sponge divers were exploring the bottom of Rock Lake within Wisconsin. What they found, however, is more precious than sponge, or indeed golden relics. They would make a discovery so perplexing, some specialists are still struggling to explain it to this day. One of the divers, John Kennedy, stumbled across a large triangular rock formation near the middle of the lake a structure which towered up from the deep, almost breaching the surface. He estimated that the structure which still existed above the mud was around 20 feet in diameter and around 40 feet from the edge of the lake. John collected several small fragments from around the structure, specimens which would later aid in collaborating their claims. Although rumors of an ancient pyramid existing in the lake had circulated since the 1930s, this was the first time in modern history that evidence had successfully been retrieved. It must be noted, Rock Lake is extremely ancient, and the area that is said to house an ancient pyramid has remained submerged for well over 10,000 years. Due to this geological fact, if it were not for John's physical evidence, the site may have been successfully overlooked by mainstream archaeology. Heated debate regarding John's and other claims from the 30s now raged on for several years, many mainstream archaeologists predictably rejecting the premise that a pyramid of over 10,000 years of age is resting, or more precisely, hiding, at the bottom of Rock Lake. They claim some enormous structures lay there. Native American legend records that they were built by an ancient peoples who were driven away during a flood. Although evidence was mounting, Skeptics continued to insist that those involved were mistaken. It took a flight by aerial photographer Jack Latornia to silence such rhetoric. According to mainstream academia, the site simply shouldn't exist. Yet it does. It is another valuable relic of our past, which tell of a history drenched in antiquity. A history we are slowly unraveling. 
Divers from oil companies located within the North Sea have been discovering the remains of a drowned ancient city, which once spanned from the UK all the way to Denmark. An ancient city so massive its suspected population has been estimated well into the tens of thousands. A team of climatologists, archaeologists, and geophysicists have now successfully mapped the area, which has revealed just how vast and expansive this once lost land once was. Many specialists are now claiming this was once the real heartland of Europe. This enormous civilization is now believed to have dated back to some 8,000 years ago and that the landmass was submerged over a period of several thousand years, a submersion which began some 20,000 years prior. Dr. Richard Bates of the Department of Earth Sciences at St. Andrews, who organized the Drowned Landscapes exhibit covering the finds within the UK, says the data reveals the human story behind Doggerland, a now submerged city of the North Sea that was once larger than many modern European countries. Could these discoveries reveal Doggerland as the real lost city of Atlantis? Several hypotheses have placed the sunken island of Atlantis within modern northern Europe. Most noted among such researchers is Olaus Rudbeck, who suspected that Doggerland, as well as a Viking Bergen island, which is thought to have been flooded by a mega tsunami following the Storega slide in 6100 BC, is the real location of Atlantis, a proposition he put forward all the way back in the 1600s. Some have proposed the Celtic Shelf as a possible location, and that there is certainly links to Ireland. Many places have been put forward for the possible location of the sunken city throughout the years, yet none have revealed ruins worthy of such claims, many of these areas being too small to have housed such an enormous city. Doggerland, however, fits the bill. Not only could it turn out to be the largest ancient civilization found on Earth, but it also rests in a possible location based on historical research for the city of Atlantis. It was submerged at one point in its history and it is revealing astonishing ruins of a once great and presently unknown civilization. Dr. Bates, a geophysicist, said Doggerland was the real heartland of Europe until sea levels rose to give us the UK coastline of today. We have speculated for years on the lost land's existence, from bones dredged by fishermen all over the North Sea, but it's only since working with oil companies in the last few years that we've been able to recreate what this lost land looked like. When the data was first being processed, I thought it unlikely to give us any useful information. However, as more area was covered, it revealed a vast and complex landscape. We have now been able to model its flora and fauna, build up a picture of the ancient people that lived there, and begin to understand some of the dramatic events that subsequently changed the land, including the sea rising and a devastating tsunami. The research project is a collaboration between St. Andrews and the Universities of Aberdeen, Birmingham, Dundee, and Wales Trinity St. David. I will keep you posted on their future discoveries. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care. The Bimini Road, sometimes called the Bimini Wall, is an underwater rock formation near North Bimini Island within the Bahamas. This ancient formation has caused a number of heated debates between academically funded scientific individuals and keen self-funded enthusiasts. The road is nearly a kilometer long and is composed of rectangular limestone blocks. Dr. Eugene Shin, who was originally tasked with investigating the wall, initially found and conveyed compelling details discovered during his dives. The problem, however, just like the many other currently inexplicable artifacts we often share on our channel, if this wall was ever officially confirmed as indeed artificial, it would contradict currently attested theories regarding the timeline of advanced human civilization. The fact that sea levels submerged the wall over 10,000 years ago, a geologically undeniability means that if it was ever academically authenticated as man-made, it would directly contradict that already supposedly established. Therefore, predictably, after Shin's initial funded research was concluded, he changed data to make it appear as though he had merely discovered there by humans. Greg Little, it seems, has encountered that which we continue to fight on a daily basis. Quote, all contradictions to their beliefs are probably perceived as a direct threat to them professionally and psychologically. The long history of science has countless examples of widely held beliefs 
that were proven wrong by research. But even in the face of incontrovertible proof that these beliefs were wrong, many so-called scientists refused to accept the new evidence." End quote. In his introduction, within his detailed analysis of the site, and indeed the academic fallacies therein, he states, quote, In 1968, a 1,600-foot-long J-shaped formation of stone blocks was reportedly discovered about one mile off the west coast of North Bimini by a Miami-based biologist, Dr. J. Manson Valentine. The formation was initially thought to resemble a collapsed wall or a road. Media coverage speculated that the site was associated with Atlantis, and sensationalized reports about the formation were widely disseminated. Shortly thereafter, four geologists asserted that the formation was nothing but natural limestone. Most archaeologists and geologists have accepted the four geologists' claims without question. However, an inspection of the site shows that the skeptics' most important claims about the formation are inaccurate, and other well-known archaeologists appear to have participated in the hoax as co-authors. Paradoxically, these co-authors alleged in several articles that a hoax had been perpetrated at Bimini by others. It is demonstrated herein that USGS geologist Eugene Shin and archaeologist Marshall McCusick published a series of articles wherein they presented false and misleading." End quote. It is a reality we regularly encounter, yet thankfully, one, more and more people are beginning to become aware of. We implore you to read his research. A link is added in the description. Who built the Bimini Road over 10,000 years ago? How did they build it? Where does it lead? It is, undoubtedly, highly compelling.